Let's talk about compound interest. The word compound, a compound fracture is what kind of a fracture? What's that? More than one break, yeah, a fracture on a fracture or a real bad fracture. So if we compound something, we make it bigger, we make it worse, we make it more intense. He compounded his financial difficulties because being already deeply in debt, he then went out and bought a new bass boat on credit. That compounded his problem. It made it worse. It made it bigger. So compound interest literally means interest on the interest. Okay? Interest on the interest. Compound interest is sometimes called the eighth wonder of the world because if you're investing, compound interest works for you. We've all read stories about somebody who their grandparents gave them some money when they were four years old and stuck it in an account somewhere and they didn't even know about it. And they find it when they're 50 years old and it's a million dollars. That's how compound interest works. The longer you can leave it there, the more money it makes. Now, compound interest works this way. In simple interest, we start with a principal. We earn interest and we end with a maturity value. Those are the terms in simple interest. And the reason we do it this way is because it's easy to calculate simple interest, isn't it? Just multiply the principal times the rate times time. And then we can add it to our principal and that's our maturity value. In compound interest, it's very difficult to calculate the interest unless you do it by hand for every period and that's a major pain. So, in compound interest, here's what we do. We start with what we call the present value. PV is present value. That's the amount we start with here in the present. And it's very easy, using tables or a scientific calculator, it's very easy to figure out what the future value will be under certain conditions. And then, if anybody wants to know how much interest did I make, we just subtract the present value from the future value and the difference is the compound interest. Okay, So in compound interest we use tables to find the future value and then if we want to know how much we made we just subtract the present from the future. This is the compound interest. Now let's see how compound interest works. First of all we need to look at some terms It's very important to know how often something is compounded. There's a list of terms there in the chapter. If something is compounded annually, how many times a year is that? That's once a year, okay? If it's semi-annually, how many times is that? That's twice a year. If it's quarterly, how many times a year? Four. If it's monthly, how many times a year? 12. Now those are the ones that we're going to use. There are some problems in the book where we compound daily and there's a table where we can figure that out. How many days in an ordinary year? Ordinary interest 360. Okay. Now when we compound something daily that means 360 times a year. But as it turns out compounding something daily is barely more than compounding it monthly. It seems like it would be a lot more, but it's hardly any. I mean, it is more, but not much more. So, you don't really have to worry too much about that. Now, here's what happens when we look at compounding interest. We're always interested in the total number of times we compound it. All right? Let's say we compound something semi-annually for two years. Here's year one, here's year two. We're going to compound it twice in the first year. We're going to compound it twice in the second year. Let's say we did it for three years. We'd compound it twice that year. So, if we compounded semi-annually 
for two years, what's the total number of times we would compound something? Semi-annually, um, yes, that's right. And if it were three years, how many times would that be? That'd be six times. From semi-annually, which is twice a year, and three years, how do we get six? We multiply those together, don't we? Three times two. So one of the numbers that we're always interested in, we call big N. This is the total number of periods that we compound it. The total number of periods. We always want to find that number. And we find it by taking the time in years, three years, times, and I'm going to call this, I'm just going to give this the number sign. That's the number of times we're compounding per year. So to find the total number of periods, we take the time in years and multiply it times the number of times per year that we compound it. So in this case, three years, semi-annually, that's six periods where we're going to have interest added to our account. Now, when they add interest to our account, let's say we were making, this is big N, the total number of times that we compound. Let's say we were earning 8% interest. Now that 8% is understood to be 8% for what length of time? 8% for how long? Uh, let, let, me, let me rephrase. <laughs> is this 8% a day? It's 8% a year. Interest rate is always expressed as an annual rate. Okay, so if I borrow money at 8%, that's understood to mean 8% a year. So, if they're only paying us 8% for a whole year, they're not going to pay us 8% every six months. They're going to divide that up over the year, aren't they? They're going to say, well, we'll pay you 4% when we compound here. We'll pay you another 4% when we compound here, and that'll be 8% for the year. Okay? So, not only are we interested in this big N, this number of periods total, but we're interested in what we call little i. That's the interest rate per period. Okay? Big N is total number of periods. Little i is the interest rate per period. Rate per period. And you can see if we look at the interest rate, which was 8%, that's our big R, and we look at the number of times we compounded a year, twice, how did we get 4% out of that? That's right. We took this annual rate and divided it by the number of times we were compounding. So the interest rate per period is the annual rate divided by the number of times we compounded. So our annual rate in this case was 8%. And we compounded, I'm sorry, yeah, we're compounding it twice a year. So every time we compound it, we are earning 4% interest on whatever was in there during the last six months. Now that's just terminology and we'll see it in just a minute. Any questions on that? Now I do have something on the website that has this all mapped out and all these things explained and all the formulas and stuff and it's under chapter 12. And it just says uh, N and I or compound interest I think is what it says. Now let's look at how we would do this manually Let's do this situation where we're going to put money in the bank. Let's say we put $1,000 in the bank for three years at 8% interest compounded semi-annually. 